Chant au thé. It's our little people. And no, I don't mean dwarves. I don't mean elves. I don't mean that kind of thing. No, no, no. These are people who are, they're not midgets. They're not anything like that. They're perfectly proportioned people, just like us. But they're smaller. That's all. They're just really, really small. And a lot of tribes, especially in the northern plains, a lot of tribes have these stories of them. And it's really interesting. How did they come to be? In this story, Iktomi is a trickster. He wasn't always this way. He used to be a wise, wise man. But the thing is, he looks kind of funny. And he did, had a different name. But he did something in which he tried to get revenge on people who were laughing at him. And as a result, it totally backfired. And the result was he became Iktomi, the trickster. So from that time, he went around causing problems. He, you know, like he would go to some group of animals and he would talk to them and he would say, Hey, um, I heard them other animals over there and they, they said you guys are really funny looking. And they were saying, wow, who who said that? I said, those guys over there, you see? Don't you think they're funnier looking? He would say. And then they would say, yeah. So then this group of animals goes and attacks that other one because they thought that the Ikdomi was telling the truth. It turned out it was all a lie. It's just gossip. And so after doing this for a long time, all the animals, they didn't want to have anything to do with him because they realized that nothing that this Iktomi was saying was the truth. And when they learned that, whenever Iktomi came around, they would take off. Ah, oh, geez, here comes that worthless, useless guy. Oh, shit, let's get out of here before he tries to talk to us, kind of thing. So they would all take off. And, you know, At first he was like, well, I don't care. I like being alone. Yeah. But after a time, he started to, to feel lonely. I have an idea, he said. I'm going to make a, a people, and they will look up to me. They'll think I'm really great, and and they're going to worship me, and they're going to see me like a super person, and they will pray to me. That was his idea. So he started thinking, huh, what can I do? Mm. So he was uh, sitting at a stream drinking water. And he looked down the stream and here he saw a squirrel. And the squirrel was drinking water. And he had something in his hands. And he noticed that, hey, that, that squirrel looks like he has little hands. Like people hands. It's like, so... Huh. So he's watching that squirrel, and then, and then he thought, "Okay, I have an idea." So um, he was following the squirrel around, and he he realized that there was a family, and they were living in the in the tree. And he saw that there was baby squirrels inside. So one time, the adults the, they went out, so he ran over there really fast and he took off with one of the squirrel babies. And so he, he went someplace. There was some kind of leaves that he got. And then he, he wrapped this squirrel baby inside these leaves and he put it in the ground and then he, he did some kind of a ceremony over it because he, he was going to transform this into a, a person. And when he did that, it got up and it was like a little little man. And here it took off. <laughs> it just took off. <laughs> so he was like, geez, I must didn't do something right. He said, so he <laughs> next he got another one. And every time he did this ceremony and he opened those leaves up, this thing would jump out and just take off. 
And geez, he was getting mad. Yeah, I said, geez. And he'd go look for some more squirrels, <laughs> taking off with the squirrel babies. In, and he kept doing this. And finally, he said, I'm going to get a hundred of them, he said. So <laughs> he went and got a whole bunch of squirrel babies. And he did the same thing all at the same time. He put them all under the ground and he did the ceremony, singing over all of them. And then when he was done, he took the dirt off of them and he opened them and they all jumped up and they took off. <laughs> so, so he lost his people, yeah? <laughs> He went looking for them, and you know, he because he could track, yeah, he could little tiny footprints, and he was following them. And here they hid in the trees, and they went deep into the forest, really, really deep into the forest. And uh, Iktomi got lost. He, he didn't know where he was. So he started to cry. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so uh, finally. One of them came out, and I asked him, I said, what's wrong with you? And he said, he was trying to get all of them to come out. So he was saying something like, yeah. He said, I really, really feel sad when I'm by myself. And he said, and the more people that there are, I feel better, and and I'm healed, he said. He said, so could you tell your friends to come and and so I'll feel better. And so they said, uh, yeah. They said, I can. But you have to go over there. They said, they, we'll meet you over there. They, they, he told him to go to a certain place. The side of a tall hill. And there's a steep cliff on the other side. So they said, okay. So he was standing there waiting. And here, sure enough, a whole bunch of these little people were coming. They were running. <laughs> So he told me, he put his arms out like he's going to hug them. And my people, thank you for coming to me. And they, pushed, they pushed him over the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> they pushed him over the cliff and they started throwing rocks at him and, until they, he was buried under all these rocks. Yeah, and So he couldn't get up. Then they took off and they went back into the trees. That's how the little people came. Yeah? <laughs> they destroyed their creator. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just silly. This guy is just rugged. Yeah? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is crazy. But that's how these kind of stories are. Yeah. So that's the story of how the little people came. They're called Chang'oti. They're kind of mischievous. And the tradition goes that they always appear to children more than adults. And they're really playful little beings. And the, what they try to do is lure children into the forest until the child gets lost. This, it's like they're playing a game in which the child has to be quiet so nobody realizes that the child's wandered off. And the next thing you know, it's lost. And so when it gets out to the wilderness, then these little people, they jump into the trees and the child is just left alone and is subject to the element and the wild animals. So if the child isn't found, it becomes food for the wolves. Because the wolves have a alliance with Iktomi. That's another story that explains how the wolves became allies with Iktomi. And Iktomi represents unhealthiness and duality. These Iktomi stories, when you look at them, Really, really think about the stories. You realize that Iknomi is a great teacher. And what he's teaching you is duality. 
I mean, he's not teaching you to become dualistic. No, 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 no. He's teaching you the danger of duality. That when you become dualistic, you become him. You become his victim. Because you've become unhealthy. He doesn't want you to see the fullness of reality in these stories. Okay? And so when wolves have an association with Iktomi, and this is not a good thing for the people. And this Cha'oti, these are creations of Iktomi. So when they get children lost in the forest, and they become food for the wolves. That's dangerous, yeah? That's scary, too. Remember that show that was called Unsolved Mysteries? It was a real, real cool show where one of them mysteries took place with the Arapaho Indians. There was a gold rush back in those days, and people you know, were looking for gold. A lot of these people who were looking for gold, they were looking in, in the Tetons, which are south of the Black Hills. These gold miners were looking for gold there, and they, on the hillside, they saw something and. Um, and by a river where they were uh, searching for gold, they saw um, something eroded or something in the hillside. So they were digging in there and they found like a little chamber in inside this hill. And there was a lot of bodies in there. Because see, in a lot of Indian traditions, including Lakota people, generally what they did was they put the body on a scaffold on a hill for four days and four nights and then they take it down and then they they go to a river where there's a river bank and then they dig in there and they put the body there because this is a symbolical thing I'm not going to explain that because that's kind of sacred that's not for public forums like this show that's a sacred thing but that's what they did and other tribes were similar to that too, including the Arapahos. So when these two gold miners, they went in, the, in this hill, they found a chamber in there and they saw all these dead bodies in there. So they thought, hey, let's take the necklaces and the clothes off of these dead bodies and they can sell it to museums. Because this is the kind of thing that was going on. It still happens, even to this day. You have people robbing ancient Indian burial sites. What they find, they sell it on eBay and stuff like that. So really illegal so they were looking at these dead bodies and here they saw one that was really small what was peculiar is that it was not a baby it was not a midget the modern term little people is describing midgets okay but the Lakota term of little people is not describing midgets yeah? so I'm going to use the word midget and I don't mean any disrespect Okay, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. I'm saying that right now. So this thing was not a midget. It, it was not a baby. And it was human. And it was like fully developed. It had a fully developed skull, fully developed torso, legs, feet, fingers, arms. Everything was fully developed. They thought that they could sell this too. So they took off with it. And let's see, who bought it? Some guy who was running a carnival sideshow, he bought it. Yeah. <laughs> see, rugged people. So they were displaying it in a tent. There was a, a little boy who, who saw this. And he's an old man. In the 1980s, he's an old man. But when he's a little boy, he saw this in early 1900s at a state fair someplace. Yeah, he saw this and... He was always wondering what happened to it. So that's when this Unsolved Mysteries began to do the research. And what the information they were presenting was on this show. And what happened was it ended up in a museum, I think. In Pennsylvania, I think it somehow ended up over there. And then nobody knows what happened from there. But there is a photo. There is a photo of it. The photo is not doctored, it's not a fake, and that's all they have to go on. 
And at first, some doctors were thinking this was a, a, a native person uh, that developed some kind of encephalic. Oh shoot, I forgot the, the real fancy medical term. Yeah, involving something with the brain, and therefore it causes it not to grow normally. That's what they thought. But the problem is that usually when something like that happens. It doesn't look like what you see in the picture. That's the problem, that it doesn't match. So what the picture shows is the bones are just perfectly fully developed. Everything is completely developed, just like us guys, but it's small. It's really, really tiny. That's a little person. A lot of tribes have these these beliefs in the northern plains. It's funny huh, how that showed up in the unsolved mysteries. <laughs> but it shows you it's real. Yeah, a lot of people, when we tell our stories, is yeah, yeah, Lakota mythology. Hmm, well, that's just well, really amazing stuff. So you know, almost as good as the Greek mythology. Yeah, but yeah, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> It's not, yeah, because the the bones are there. I mean, we have these stories of Mkcheshi monsters, and they find the bones of these things. They existed, which means the people were there at the time because they described them. They described what color they were. They described what their wings looked like, what their heads looked like, what their tails looked like. All these stories describe them really good, which means somebody must have been there when they were still here, which goes to show you that we were here a lot longer than people think. That's why the stories are, it's really good to know the stories because there's it's a lot of useful information in there, plus it tells you how long a people has been in a location. Real, real interesting things. Anyway, these little people, in our language, we call them chon oti because for us they live in the in the trees. But what was interesting when Lakota people look at this, and it's like this is really interesting because it shows that this little person was buried in the same way that the native people do their customs. And it was buried with native people. It's really interesting. What I think is important is when you look at, okay, how did they come to be? And what happened after that? And because, see, in the Lakota way, what this is teaching is that, yeah, you know, sometimes things develop from something selfish, something not good but they develop in a healthy way the circumstances from which they originated might not have been good but they developed into something different that was not anyway the microphone almost fell out Whoop, there's my alarm why do I have an alarm <laughs> to turn that off. <laughs> so this this uh this is what this is teaching because when we when we look at the Chan O T story and how that comes from a Ikdomi story and <laughs> this is a really rugged guy and uh <laughs> my people <laughs> yes, it's, arms stretched out and they run him over and throw him off the edge. <laughs> uh, shit, I'm sure we all know people like that. Yeah? <laughs> oh, heck. Anyway, um, see, in that story, it shows that they were known for mischievousness, but they develop. See, everything develops. That's what we always have to remember. In, in Lakota stories, lots of situations 
you have a character, and the character, like say for example, without saying the name of this person, there's a character that in the beginning was a total, total no good person, just spoiled brat, tempestuous, tem temperamental, demanded to have something this way and and even when that person got their way they still found fault with it and constantly complained about this and that and gee <laughs> today we call her Unchimaka <laughs> that's our grandmother earth so you see, there's a development. Yeah? So this is the way she started, but she becomes motherly in time, and then grandmotherly. So now she's a very wise woman. When they sing about her in songs, like she's always known as Grandmother Earth, Unchimakha. And so people don't realize that. She was not always this wise grandmother or this wise mother earth. She was not always that way. In the beginning, it was different. She was quite different. She was was a very jealous person, very selfish. Um, and um, because of her jealousy, something happened. And in the beginning, it was a bad situation. Yeah, But that situation, the people that were involved in that situation, they developed as well. She wronged a woman. She wronged a woman who was her friend. And so for a while, there was animosity there. But that later comes to peace. See, there's a bunch of stories that explain this, okay, but I don't have time for that. But they come to peace. And the result is that the woman that our earth wronged, after they come to peace with the situation, that other woman forms another Wakantanka. I say Wakantanka is an organization. It's not God. It's an organization of many people. So through that, they make the best of the situation and something beautiful results from it. So a, a second Wakantanka comes into being here. The only difference is they just work differently. They're basically doing the same thing, but they just do it in different ways. That's why there's more than one. So you see, from something really disturbing, it was basically a crime, but still they somehow came to peace with it, and they develop more, both ladies evolve, they develop more, and what results is something incredibly beautiful that we have today. And so this is what it's trying to teach us, is that nothing in the universe is perfect. It's developing, it's evolving, it's living. That's how life is, that's the manner of it. So when you realize that, you lose that stress like, for example, in a dualistic ideology, they say, okay, if you live this way and you follow these rules, then after you die, you end up in this place and everything is perfect and no more this and no more that, you know? But that is an expression of extremism in a dualistic picture, okay, of good versus evil. But in the Lakota way of looking at it, everything is important. It's what you do with it. So when you go through a difficulty, it's what you do with it. If you learn from it, make the most of it that you can, that keeps you on the healthy road. And the result will be good. So you're completing it. You're transforming it. But you're, you have to do the work for that. That's why we don't have a good versus evil concept. So all emotions play a role and the danger is that when we try to just feel only one emotion that's where duality is created and that's where trouble starts and everybody says okay yeah we're going to go to this place where only happiness 
only light. <laughs> and that's why when the first preachers came to Indian country and they were talking about heaven, uh, the old old people, they didn't want to go there. Because they're like, that's that's really unhealthy. <laughs> that's dualistic. I don't, I don't want to go to heaven. There's value in the dark. There's value in the time that connects the dark to the light. There's always going to be a third element. It's not just two. So, all that makes this is developing from some kind of situation. Like if you're thrown into a situation that is totally out of your control, in which it it hurts or it pisses you off or it's it just you're you're really scared you don't know what to do you don't know what's going to happen next and that's just the initial part that's just the beginning but that doesn't mean it's going to get worse but it's up to you it, it will get worse if you don't do anything it definitely will get worse but if you bring in your mind First, express those feelings without hurting anybody. But as soon as you bring in your mind and you start making the best of it, learning from it, then you're, you're heading on a healthy direction. All these stories are showing that. So this Chao Ot, they follow this too. They were created by a very, very selfish man who only thought of himself. <laughs> then in this story, they destroy him. <laughs> and then they become known for mischief but then they develop they evolve too so this is what we always have to be aware of is that things evolve but we also have to be aware too that sometimes when things change it does not get better like the character that's called Iktomi. This guy was, when he was created, he was very wise. He just grew in wisdom very fast at a very young age. And he fell. And he, he fell from grace, you could say. And became the trickster. But he still can teach. So when you look at the stories, the stories teach on many levels. If you're not able to see the underlying thought, that's okay, because you still learn something. You don't marry your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Iktomi story like that, where he takes off with his mother-in-law, and they, they get married, and have a bunch of kids, and they're all... All kind of goofy and <laughs> she those are crazy stories in ancient tradition, there's only a certain time to tell Iktomi stories and that's done in the deep winter time. That's the only time of the year that you you can tell those stories so if you go to a summer camp and there's a Lakota guy telling Iktomi stories, he's breaking tradition. And it probably means he doesn't know that rule because of that Christian brainwashing experience that told Indians of those days that everything that Indians believed was wrong. So there's lots of rules that a lot of people don't know today. Anyway, these Chant Ot, they're known for being really playful. And people still see them. I have a friend who lives out in the country in South Dakota on the reservation and he has some young boys so he was working in, in the town and his wife was working too so his mother would stay at their house and watch it because people steal that's just how it is on the res today so you know, if you live out in the country if you, you're not going to be there it's always a good idea to have a relative come there and stay there while you're gone and have some watchdogs at the same time, too. It's really important. Anyway, so this is what he did, yeah? He had his mother stay there and watch because the kids would come home from school early before him and his wife came home. So 
the mother was there and the the boys came home from school and and they had a snack and they were outside the youngest one was outside playing around and when my friend and his wife pulled in they saw they saw him he was running back and forth and really laughing and then he climbed up a tree and he was laughing the whole time and they, <laughs> so they, they were calling him and they were saying hey what you doing how come you're running like that and he said, I'm playing not it. He said, Lakota kids, that's what we say. Everywhere else they say tag. Yeah, but <laughs> we say not it. <laughs> we don't even say tag. Yeah, we just touch somebody and say not it, and they take take off. <laughs> he said, I'm taking, I'm playing not it. It's my friend. <laughs> So they were thinking, oh, crap, he has an imaginary friend. (laughs) So they were were like, okay, so we have to, you know, (laughs) how are we going to deal with that? And here they asked him, they said, what's his name? And here he gave a Lakota name. And their boy, he can't speak Lakota. And so they're like, gee, where did he get that name from? So the grandma, she said to her son, Oh, I said, better be careful in Lakota. I think he's playing with Cho Oti Wichasha. He's playing with a, a little a little person. So they're like, oh. So they were asking him to describe what did he look like. He's a really little man. He's <laughs> and so he, he described, you know, the kind of clothes he was wearing, and it was really strange, strange kind of clothes. So they they figured there must be a chanty there, and that explains why he was sitting up in a tree, because this is where they live. So they wanted to be respectful about it so they wanted to let that person know that they know of him and they just wanted to show respect so they made an offering outside and they talked out loud then so here we have an example where the adults couldn't see it but the child could so it was not imaginary it, it was real it was a real thing because they, they did see the footprints. They did find them. And they were really, really small. It's a lot of things that scientists don't want you to know. They don't want you to know these things because it it will literally say that science is a total bullshit thing. In the Indian world, people know these things. So when they go to school and they're getting their college degrees and the and the scientists are saying, you know, this and that, and that's how the universe was created. And and they go study biology and take a general biology class that everybody has to take. And the teacher or professor is saying, well, oh, this is how life began. And and then they take a, a astronomy course and they say, oh, this is the way the universe began. And and a real traditional people are they just go along and say, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. (laughs) But they know it a different way. So among those who still speak the language, we still know these things. And with these little people, that they are very real. This is not a, a mythology. This is not a folklore. This is the real deal. Because a lot of Times they are known for mischief, and when they come around the house, they have to go out there and make it known, you know, that hey, we respect you, but we're asking you to respect us too. So, be in peace. I have a child here. I love my child, and I'm sure you love your child too. Keep that in mind. And then, of course, we instruct our children, don't follow it. 
if it leaves the house, don't follow it. No matter what it says, don't follow it. Just to be safe. So these are really old traditions that sadly lots of people, they don't follow it anymore. They don't believe it because they're becoming modernized, which is unfortunate. These little people, they are here. They do exist. We do have an information regarding them, and and sometimes it's scary. Like I said earlier, of when they were first created, that they would lead children into the wilderness so the wolves could eat them. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of rugged. Anyway, don't let yourself get limited. Just be open to possibilities that you didn't think of before. And if you have that kind of thought that's already opening the door for you to increase the quality of your life. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otehike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.